she wanted to bring the bow, her bow, because I was bringing mine. When we get to shoot together or hunt together, train together, that's, I don't know, that's probably one of my favorite things. Pride is the one thing that I think kills every archery career. It really does. I can do it myself. And um, there's always something to learn from somebody somewhere. So. I would say if you want a job in the archery industry, you work your ass off. And a lot of people are not going to notice that at first. Hey everyone, this is Rod White, and you're either listening to or watching The Rod White Bow Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Rod White Bow Show, and uh, I'm here with a couple special guests. Michael, I spent a lot of time with in the mountains, and uh, Jalissa, I got to know through a mutual friend, and um, got an opportunity to kind of, I don't want to say coach, because I'm not your coach, but... Kind of, I mean, you want to be a lot. <laughs> but I got a chance to uh, hang out with her, watch her, watch her shoot some arrows, and um, she's got a lot of potential in this sport, and it's a pretty unique dynamic for me. With these two, you don't see a lot of it. You see some of it, but not a lot of it. And it really shows for me what archery can do for two people coming together that really didn't know each other. So mm -hmm. just to be open and freely about it, um, I divorced, remarried. What's yeah, I was married once for 12 years, got divorced, and then hooked up with her mother, which actually I dated in high school. Awesome. Yeah, I dated in high school. And then split up. We went our separate ways, and then came back together. Yeah, you know, fifteen years later, something like that. So, how long have you guys been together, as far as a family, or yeah, as a family, I would say. Oh, the fall yeah. of '09. So, is that seven years? Yeah. 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 And in that time period, that transition, you did not shoot archery at the time, or you did a little bit? Um, I was so far from archery hunting, anything like that, um, until he came into the picture. What do you mean far? Like, like define that. Like, you, like, did you, like, I don't like hunting at all, I don't know what hunting is. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't know anything about hunting. Honestly, I didn't really have an opinion on hunting at that time, because I was pretty young. Um, but my family... My whole family was pretty much against hunting. And I should say, they're, you guys are born and raised in Montana, correct? Mm -hmm. So, uh, for all of you out there listening, you see me go to Montana and y'all want to go and move out there. These guys live the dream. They they grew up there and um, have a pretty cool cool place there. So, um, when did you introduce your archery? The day, and I don't remember, We it wasn't during the summer. It was... It was during the summer. It was during the summer. We're at a cabin. Yeah, at my uncle's cabin um, down the West Fork of the Bitterroot. And she had, when we hooked up, she had, and I don't know why, but a little, one of those little white fiberglass bows. I mean, just the kind you buy at Walmart for 15 bucks. And a couple of little wooden arrows with the tips that always come off and stuff like that. And we were going camping. And this wasn't long after we all, you know, hooked up. And... and she wanted to bring the bow, her bow, because I was bringing mine. And let me back up just a little bit, because when we hooked up, I was already heavily into shooting. And I would go to tournaments, you know, and I'd leave the house, and they'd go, good luck. And they really didn't know much about it. And I'd come back, and Jalissa would always say, you know, how'd you do? Did you win? Blah, blah, blah. And then, so that, you know, that next summer... She wanted to bring a bow with her because I was bringing mine. There's gophers running around, stuff like that. And so she wanted to bring a bow. And then, okay. So I taught her how to shoot that bow. And pretty much when we packed up the truck to come home, she looked at me and she said, I want a compound. And I want to shoot a bow. I want to shoot a bow. And I was like, uh, okay, we'll see. I mean, compounds aren't cheap. I mean, <laughs> even for the, the kid ones, I'm just like, right. We'll see, you know. And then we talked, and for her birthday in October, we went and got her one, and uh, she's hardly put it down since. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, for reference, we're actually sitting behind us in Vegas in the background, not because we're out here just rocking out and having a good time, but <laughs> we're, uh, we are having a really good time. This uh, We're at the uh, World Archery Festival, what mm -hmm. they call it that. Mm -hmm. So, it's just changed so much for me, but I've been gone for a while in the sport. So, um, we both, all three of us, uh, cranked out some scores today, and I think I'll do 
fairly well. And so, Jules, you came from, like, give us kind of a little bit of a time warp story with all the key points. Like, so what, what you got this bow, and then now you're here sitting, mm-hmm. shooting in the pro division, pro <laughs> women's division. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been kind of crazy, the journey I've had. You know, I started shooting a, a little kid's compound bow, and... Um, I went to my, after my birthday, after I got that bow, I went to my first 3D shoot, just a local 3D shoot, and I was shooting in, like, the youth division, and it, there was, like, three of us in the class, and I ended up winning, and I was like, yay, <laughs> and, like, <laughs> I, I liked winning, and so, um, so then we went some more, and I really enjoyed it, and then the next year, I think I bumped up to the young adult class or something, and I didn't do as well, and I didn't like that. So I like I wanted to improve and improve and then we went to Reading and then Vegas I guess that was this will be our third year so two years ago in Vegas um, and then really probably about two years ago I wanted to get serious about shooting archery and so I um, shot all the time like hundreds of arrows a day last year I shot um, the USA. Um, team qualification. I went to Gator Cup, SoCal, um, and Outdoor Nationals. And so then just now we're here pretty much and I just keep shooting and it's been a blast. And so sponsor wise, because everybody wants to know how to get sponsors, especially there's a lot of kids out there I'm sure listening to this. How, when did those first appear? And, and were they, were they kind of like introduced from you or other people or did you just call people and like, hey, I want to shoot your stabilizer or your rest or whatever it was? Um, honestly, I, I got a lot from him. Um, and we have had a website that um, we had a team. There were three of us on the team. And uh, we had sponsors as a team. And then here recently, I've kind of wanted to branch out and starting to talk to companies. Um and just build relationships <coughs> with companies as an individual instead of Mike's daughter or what stuff like that. So. Awesome. And so for you, you would now have an industry job, mm-hmm. but your journey from, let's just say from where, you know, Jill just came in the picture from there to now, I mean, it's, you made a lot of friends, obviously, mm-hmm. but um, I know that's a big part of archery for me, especially this is where my family is. But for you to make that, that leap from, taking her to her first few tournaments and being involved a little bit in archery yourself to now you have a, a position in the archery industry, mm-hmm. which is another question. Everybody wants to know how you get a job in the archery industry, which is funny because I don't have one, but <laughs> 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 I'm looking. <laughs> um, but uh, what, what, what does that look like for, because a lot of people really do wonder, how do I get a job in the archery industry and what does that mean? Like what kind of sacrifices are going to be made because there are sacrifices? I would say if you want a job in the archery industry, you work your ass off. And a lot of people are not going to notice that at first. Um, Like for me, honestly, I never really got into the industry as far as even, you know, sponsorships or anything like that till six-ish years ago, maybe seven at the most. Um, But I've been shooting and competing locally and stuff like that for years. I've loved archery my whole life. Um, But it's just being out, talking to people, working with people, working for people and companies and not getting paid. Working for, you know, companies. As a pro staffer, you know, you get their product and stuff. You go above and beyond as far as promoting, um, as far as, you know, going out and doing small photo shoots type of thing, you know, and plastering photos all over social media, stuff like that. Um, and a lot of it, honestly, is luck. Meet the right people. You know, you you got to be that person out there that people like to talk to and right. that, you know, that you get along well with others and, you know, you talk to others and meet a lot of people. And like I said, a lot of it's luck. Just finding that certain someone that, Hey, I like you, you know, let's, maybe we can do something, you know, kind of deal. And, and that's how, pretty much how it's, it's happened with me. 
Well, it would seem like a big stepping stone for you too was, um, it was called Montana Connection. Montana's right? Archery Connection. And that yeah. was, um, when I met you, I said we met through a mutual friend mm-hmm. and, um, when we did, I, I didn't know you at all or whatever, but I, I kind of checked out some stuff and saw the Montana Connection stuff. You had a sticker on the back of your truck and, mm-hmm. um, you know, for most people listening, I'm sure, or watching, they're, they don't have any idea what that is or what it was. No. Um, so explain what that is, because I think, I could be wrong, but I think that was a major part. When you say you go over the top and you work your tail off to get to that, I think that's, that was a big stepping stone for you, I think. I'm mm-hmm. actually not on the board. Yeah, it was it. huge. Um, and it was actually only around four, yeah, three or four years. Um it was Montana's Archery Connection. What it was was a website that dealt specifically with Montana. Um, all the different 3D shoots around the state. Montana's a big state. And word doesn't travel very fast in Montana. And so if there's a shoot, you know, over in Bozeman, people where I'm from in western Montana, they don't hear about it really. And so this was a website to let people know, okay, we got to shoot over here, shoot over here. And then I also, you know, we did product reviews um, with a lot of Montana companies. Um, We didn't, it wasn't specifically all Montana companies, but a lot of Montana companies. And then we also had like rut reports and talk about hunting, you know, the elk are doing this over in here and this over in here. Because it's really hard to find information on the hunting side of it. And that's really when the light bulb clicked and I was actually trying to find what the whitetail were doing over in the eastern part of the state. And I, I couldn't find anything. No one was talking about it. I was like, gosh, what are they doing? <laughs> so I was trying to encompass the whole state. And I had some folks that I had talked to and stuff, you know, throughout the state. You know, what are the deer doing? What are the elk doing? And then try to put them on the website. And then, like I said, I did product reviews and stuff like that. And, um. So that's kind of where it all started. Um, but like I said, yeah, I built the own, my own website. We did our own product reviews. I mean, everything we did. And that's that working your tail off and not getting paid for it, but it's fun. You right. love to do it. And you just, and that's kind of where it started and snowballed from there. Yeah, I think if you listen to um, anybody in the street, really, you know, if you're listening on a knock on podcast, Dudley will tell you the same thing. You know, worked a lot, and his guests will tell you, they worked a lot for nothing, for mm-hmm. free. Um, I was really fortunate. I grew up in the Junior Olympic Archer Development System, the Joad System, so um, I was kind of thrust into sponsors almost back then, and I think it's changed a little bit now, but, you know, I started off with Hoyt and then made a big switch right before the games in 96 to PSE because I could build my own recurve the way I wanted to build it, and then um, in 2000, there, there was a job change, some other changes in my life, so I wound up building Matthew's bow with Matt McPherson. So, um, which is funny because neither one of those bows were ever made or sold other than their prototypes that we shot. <laughs> so they won two medals, the PC won a gold and then the bronze in the 2000s, the Matthew's bow that were never for sale. <laughs> <laughs> but um, while, while I was going through that process, um, I'd say a little bit kind of a different process. You know, you, you had levels of achievement in Joe I just at a local club level. Then we went to local tournaments and a state tournament and nationals and I did really well locally, and I went to my first national. I came like 44th out of 46 kids, probably. And, uh, man, instead of taking it really, really bad, I got really upset. And I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to be in the top 10. And so over time, I got in the top, I think I was like top, I want to say maybe 8th the next year. I said, I'm going to come in top 3 next year, and I think I won the next year, if I remember right. And then got asked to go to Junior World Championships, and then before I know it, I'm in France, Italy, and all over the place. Traveled everywhere from Italy to Indonesia, so... A lot of my experiences have, have sprouted from that, and you're. It, it's interesting when you meet new people all the time, or just talk about the ways they got into sports and how they've excelled at the sports. And you know, Julissa, you you were shot for um, if I got this right, five years now, roughly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. five ish years. And you're here shooting the pro division, so um, you know anything can really happen in this sport, and that's what makes it really, really cool. Mm-hmm. And then there's the hunting side of things. So if you're not even a target archery, uh, Michael and I hunted together this year in Montana. Had a really, really good time. Mm-hmm. Um, hands down, one of the best hunting partners I've ever had. Yeah, we it just, was a good time. Yeah, we clicked. You know, it was really cool. And I think um, whether you're going into target archery of any sort, you know, if it's going to be coming to Vegas or you're going to ASAs, 
you've got to seek out and find those people that you just mesh really well with, you know, and sometimes by circumstance in our, in our case, um, John and Davis and Bojek, that's how we met. Um, and that relationship with us grew quite a bit. Yeah. And then, you know, Julius, you were sponsored. That was, was that one of your first sponsors or? Bojek? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think it was one of my first, no. but. You had Hot Shot before that. I had Hot Shot before that. Hot Shot release it. But those, mm-hmm. those relationships yeah. are, are what fostered more relationships. And say, you know, now, geez, we're probably going to be hunting together in Montana this year, I'm yeah, sure. We better. Um, and you two hunt a lot. And that's another cool little thing I wanted to get yeah, into. Yeah, and that's... It's funny you mention that because you're pretty much the only one I've hunted with for the last, I don't know, seven, eight, maybe close to ten years. I mean, there's been a couple guys that we go out for a day or so. But, I mean, as far as a hunting partner and spending time in the woods together on trips. Yep. I mean, it's been... It's been me and Jalissa for the last five years. I mean, just if I'll go hunting by myself once in a while, but we're almost always together. Elk, bear, deer, whatever. I mean, it's she takes time off of school. We'll spend a week out in the elk woods. Um, after school, I pick her up. You know, we go hit the whitetails. I mean, it's she's been my hunting buddy. And the cool part is, too, I do see you guys not just hunting together, you're training together. Mm-hmm. Like I remember seeing a lot of summertime pictures where you guys were just outside of, is, you're, I know you're in Lolo, that's by Billings, right? No, Missoula. Missoula, Just, just south of Missoula. Um, so, I mean, you got post, postings all the time. You do a lot of Instagram stuff, we both do, and, and I see you guys out there training together. And that's, dude, that's so beyond cool for me because, especially for me, I'm a divorced dad and I don't. I don't have the luxury of seeing my kids like that and have the um, opportunity. So to see you guys do that and watch those posting, it puts a big smile on my face. Like, you guys can't see it from where you're at, but it puts a big <laughs> smile on my face. And there's other people like that, Lindsay Christensen and her dad, Benton. And we'll do, you know, time will get um, some time, put those together too. But I just want everybody to see what it, what, this is, um, we're, we're three of 3,500 people here this weekend yeah. at the Vegas Championship. Yeah, and you're there's watching a ton of this. folks here. Yeah. And you're watching this later. I mean, by the time you guys see this, it'll it'll be a walk. So I've got quite a bit of podcasts I've got in the library. But um, I guess the important thing is I just wanted to share a relationship with people. I mean, Michael's a really, really good friend. Jalissa's a good friend, obviously. Michael and I hunt together. I don't hunt with very many people. I actually prefer to hunt most of the time by myself. But Michael and I clicked really, really well. And that's what I mean by trying to find the right hunting partner even. You have to have kind of the same styles in some cases, and in some cases, completely opposite styles. Like mm-hmm. I know some of the bulls we went after, went after, you know, like you know, yeah, we were kind of flipping a coin here and there. Who's going to go after what? But most of the time, we build our strategy around the fact that there's two of us. Yeah. And okay, well, there's what are our two most likely options that this bull is going to do with this cow? We were hunting some open country, and then you went one place and I went to the other, and even within that, we had to wind up adapting and um, scurrying back and forth and. I just, I had a really good time with you, and I, I think for me, you know, it's just really, really rare for me to find somebody like that in hunt with. Whitetails are different. You're sitting in a tree with somebody, you gotta, you know, maybe help them learn a little way, a little bit around the camera, um, but it's just a totally different experience. Yeah. So, to find the right partner, and you guys are the right partners for each other, and yeah, family. And it's, and it's crazy, and she'll agree. Um, we love each other incredibly. We hunt well together, but we're almost brother and sister in a way. We bicker and fight. <laughs> and, I mean, yeah, we get we get tested each other, but it, it, it works, and it works well. Um, and if I'm hunting by myself, I mean, I miss her. Right. I wish she was there. You said that like 10 times at, 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 while we were in Montana. Yeah, he did, yeah. I really did. Oh. Yeah. And so... Um, yeah, and it, and she's a heck of a hunter. I yep. mean, she's killed a ton of stuff. I mean, gosh, that one year, one year me and her killed what our white tails and our opening elk. day. We sh- shot our white tails opening day, uh, right? And then the next weekend mm-hmm. we went to um, our elk camp. We, you shot a cow. I shot my first bull, and then that winter. I shot my mountain lion, and I guess it was December, like right by Christmas. And it was the winter sh- after, because I killed mine that winter, and then you killed yours the next winter. 
No, it was the same year that really? I shot my bull, yeah. I think that's how the bickering starts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you guys chase lions, and at the end of the day, I love chasing lions. Yeah. So I, I catch a lot of your posts on Instagram, both of you. Um, and you have some dogs, some lion dogs, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they, you're just starting to raise them, or you've had them for a little while? Um, the oldest is... Two. Two now. Two. Um, the youngest awesome. is... Six, seven months? Uh, I think more like... May. That. It was May. Was it? Yeah. So, yeah, May will be a year. That's awesome. But they're coming around. But we, we run with a guy that he's been doing it for 20 years, and so, yeah, we've been having a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. One of these days I'm going to join you in one of those. Yeah, I texted you last year, I'm going to go kill a wolf with my bow. Because <laughs> I don't think anyone's done it yet on camera yeah. anyways. I'm sure someone has over a bait kind of thing or something, but I'm going to do that. It's a little project of mine one of these days. But what's a struggle now is she's getting so busy with her school and work. I mean, she, don't, she works almost 40 hours a week, goes to school. Um, next year she'll be in college, trying to train. And it's now our schedules are are not matching up, and we kind of mm -hmm. cross. And it's so. a good day when I get to see you for like an hour. Yeah. But when we get to shoot together or hunt together, train together, that's I don't know. That's probably one of my favorite things. Yeah. Other than training by myself, <coughs> just a lot better to shoot with you. We like to compete. <laughs> Because she gets mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, he goes out there, he doesn't shoot a whole lot, and he doesn't really care a whole lot about it. And then he'll go out and shoot X's all day, and I'll be like, what the heck, I shoot all the time. <laughs> well, the cool thing is out there, there's the Archery and Schools program started a long time ago, and there are hopefully thousands of kids listening to this somewhere. So right now you are just graduating high I'm school. I'm a senior, yeah. Senior high school. Mm -hmm. So when you say work hard... Like, that's, it's no joke. I mean, 40 hours you put in work, and you still shoot your bow, and you still get school done. That's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. it's, so. it's tough, but somehow I figured it out. But Well, I'm, really um, some of the words would be, I'm in awe, really, <laughs> that you can pull that off. Cause I just, I missed the school part. I just, like, I'm not going to show up. I don't have to. I'm going to screw my way around it. Yeah. Which is why I don't have a job, so go school kids. Um, but... <laughs> That's, uh, it, it, it is really, it's amazing to hear, you know, someone like you that works so hard. And like Lindsay, I think, you know, she still is. At one time she had three jobs she was working just so she could get the shoots. Um, and so it's really cool to meet people like you who are just grinding away just for the opportunity to come at a shoot like this and fling a few arrows. And even cooler to see the relationship between you two. I mean, you guys are both going to be friends, obviously. But leaving um, this podcast, what do you think? Um... Well, each one of you, I guess, with I, I would say with Jalissa first. Okay. So all these kids that may be listening out there, hopefully listening out there, that are in the National Archery and Schools Program, they don't have any gear like you, most of them. Most of them are in the Archery and Schools Program, just have a Genesis bow, and they're flinging arrows down there with their fingers. And um, what those kids who, who have taken on to it, there's, a, there's unfortunately a big hole missing from the Archery and Schools Program to getting kids into bow hunting and getting kids into target archery and 3D archery and field archery and... Olympic archery, and the list just goes on and on. There, there's no bridge for those kids necessarily where they're at in most cases. So if a kid really is enthralled with that, and there's a lot of kids I meet that are, I mean, I obviously get to help them side by side or touch, help touch them in a way that gets them inspired enough that they can head to where they want to go and make the connections for them. Um, what would you tell any of the kids out there that might be listening that might be in your age bracket, even younger? Man, how do you... How are you gonna? How are they gonna navigate? How are they gonna find their way to Vegas someday? How are they gonna find their way to the Olympic Games? Honestly, I mean, a lot of hard work. And what I kind of do, since I don't have a whole lot of resources, where in Montana, um, there's not a lot of people to um, like learn from. But um, just trying to take information from wherever you can, like be it your form execution your equipment just I want to know everything about everything obviously I don't know everything and I'm still learning but um hey welcome to the podcast hey podcast <laughs> podcasters <laughs> go ahead um, sorry that's okay but honestly um 
just learn from anybody you can. Like, I learned a lot from you, and you've been a great help. Um, and another thing, like, if you don't have a lot of resources, just shoot a bunch. Because you might not see results right away, but I've been shooting a bunch for a couple of years, and I've seen, like, even every year, I see dramatic improvements in my shooting. Awesome. So. Cool. Yeah. And for Michael, for those that are trying to get to where you are and they want to be doing your job, you know it's a lot of hard work. Um, what, what would you say to people that are, I don't know, our age out there, just kind of getting into the sport or maybe they've been in it for a while and it's like, how do you get a sponsor? How do you how do you move forward? I mean, you have now 41 Digital, I think is your mm -hmm. Instagram name. You continue to kick out social media. Um, what do you got for, that, for those folks? <sighs> Boy, as far as sponsorships, I could go on forever. Um... Don't get disappointed when someone says no. Don't get disappointed when they said, well, we'll put you on, or like a, a, a shop shooter, you know, go, go through a shop. Um, don't expect your equipment free. Don't, you know, don't, don't go into the notion, well, you know, I shoot all the time, I shoot big deer, I shoot this, I shoot that, you know, I, I want a free bow. It don't work that way. <laughs> um, shop owners can't afford it. <laughs> we have a shop owner as a roommate who's over there wrestling around, so we might do one with him in a minute. But... Yeah, no free bows from shop owners. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about your luck. <laughs> but, um, and just keep working. Keep keep going. Um, you're going to get bumps and bruises. You're going to get knocked down, but keep getting back up. I mean, just keep going. Keep plugging away. You know, and this like what I've I've done, you know, with my 41 Digital, with my photography and stuff like that, and then also the companies that I've worked for, you just have to keep, whether people like your stuff at, or not at first, just keep going. Keep, you know, keep throwing out photos, videos, whatever. People don't like them, keep going. You know, get better and better, but don't stop. Don't you're going to get criticism, you're going to get knocked down, just keep getting back up, keep going, keep going, keep going, because it'll come. You want it bad enough, it'll come. So you just got to keep swinging and don't stop. And for, from a stepdad or dad relationship to your daughter, which, like someday I hope I have the kind of relationship with my daughter uh, that you guys do, um, one quick thing that you would say you really um, have found success in that relationship with? Because I know a lot of guys want to help really coach the daughter, and moms want to really help coach their sons and daughters, and there's a fine line there. For me, there was for sure. My dad was really cool. It's like, I don't know what to tell you. Here's a guy that can, though, mm -hmm. and, and let me go. And you guys have stuck very close together. So what would that one, if you could say just one thing that um, from an adult uh, perspective, working with a child that's, that's your own or stepson or stepdaughter, how are you going to get them from here to there? What, what would be the biggest factor you think that's fostered your relationship? I was lucky. Honestly, I was lucky because she took to it. Um, she started with was Diamond, Diamond Razor's Edge. Edge or Razor's Edge. Razor. Or whatever oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> and she was your basic, you know, wrist strap release, blah, blah, blah. And puncher. I was a puncher. Yeah, was a, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that one under none of us need. She no, was a puncher so bad that she, I watched her once miss the whole trigger because she was winding up her finger and <laughs> missed it. <laughs> but anyway, um, no, but I was lucky because I was shooting the back tension release and she wanted to try it. And I just, nah, I don't know. <laughs> and then she said, I want to try it. Here you go. This is how it works, blah, blah, blah. And pretty much from that moment on, back tension. I mean, and she just, it clicked, and just, she was hammering. Um, so I was very lucky. Um, but there was a lot of patience in there, too. You need a lot of patience when you work with kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also think it was really helpful that I, well, I still do look up to you a lot. Like, you're doing some awesome things that I hope that I can do some really cool things when I'm older. Um, and... Right from the start, I'm like, oh, you're shooting a bow. I want to do that, too. And then you went out hunting. You would be successful. I'm, I want to do that. And then we started getting more into target archery. And then I think it was um, a different 
realm. Like, you did 3D stuff, but you didn't really get into the Target stuff, and so that was kind of, like, my niche, and I, I really liked, and that's kind of where I'm going at the moment, and I'm having a lot of fun, but... Yeah. Awesome. And you're always there, so... And I've shot for, I mean, like I said, pretty much my whole life, and so... But I'm not a great shot, and so I could only get her up to, to here. Um, so now she's up into here, and a lot of it's her own doing. I mean, she did it. She's researched it. She's worked on this and worked on that, and she's gotten herself, you know, past the plateau. You know, I got her to that plateau, and she's working past that, and so... And I think I would agree with that. Like you, when you can recognize where you got them as far as you can get them, and then you go and find more help. Mm -hmm. And that um, that help never ends, never does. I don't know. We'll go medalist and here at Vegas. I'm shooting, and I, it, I, there, there's help. I look for help all the time. And pride is the one thing I think kills every archery career. It really does. I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. And um, there's always something to learn from somebody somewhere. So. Well, it was awesome having you guys on the show. Yeah, thanks for having oh, thanks. us. Thanks. And uh, real quick, so your resources right now that you have that you use to kick out some social media, 41 Digital. 41 Digital. And anything else? <sighs> no, not really. Not right now. So follow Michael on 41 Digital, and yours is? Uh, the Archer J with underscores between each word. Awesome. So check them out, <laughs> and uh, hope you guys got a little more information out here that'll help you with your youngins and your relationships with those around you that you care about. And uh, archery is a pretty cool sport. So. Yeah. <laughs> Peace out, guys. Thanks. Yeah. See ya. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Rod White Bow Show. To help me keep more content like this coming, I would be super appreciative if you could subscribe, like, and share this episode on your own favorite social media platforms. And as always, feel free to make comments in the section below. By commenting, you're not only giving me more direction about the information that you want me to deliver to you in the future, but you're also helping me reach more people just like us. And as a thank you for your support, the first 50 people that sign up after the show for my new online course, 60 Day Elk Training, will receive a free extinguisher game call valued at $29.99 with an instructional DVD where I walk you through how to communicate with mature whitetails and bring them tight into bow range. Thanks again for tuning in.